So it's like, I can't dunk, but I'm a really good shooter. Some people are saying, I can't dunk or shoot, but I deserve an NBA contract. And those people tend to be women, yes. Those those people tend to be women, yes. And I only bring that up because that's where Kevin Samuels comes in. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Safety and security is important for women. Um, You know, feeling solid. And if your partner is kind of that safety and security for you, then when they are off, then that can be scary. So it's really just about learning. You got to like get with yourself and, and figure it out. Because I think it is important to be able to create that space. Um, But again, I don't think it's something that we talk about. And I don't think that most most women would feel comfortable admitting that it's uncomfortable for their man to be vulnerable with them. I think you just (laughs) single-handedly validated 30,000 men. (laughs) Like, I'm serious. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, especially nowadays, the, the message is that men, going back to what you said, you're not enough. The main one now is you're not expressive enough. You're not emotional enough. You're not as in touch with your inner psychology enough. And men are saying, or sometimes just thinking or saying amongst themselves in barbershops, like, you're not ready for that. Um... Because for all intents and purposes, we, we, we have been led to believe for millennia that part of our utility is our ability to hold it together even when things are falling apart. And if I fall apart or if I'm falling apart, how can you dialogue with that as a woman? Because you look to me when you're falling apart. Yeah. You know, so even if I am, I have to pretend Um, what do you think women could be doing better to make space for that, that dilemma, I guess? Creating their own safety and security within themselves. So I think a lot of relationships are codependent. And... They're either codependent or there's two people maybe that are like hyper independent. And I think that what needs to happen is interdependence. And interdependence is really when two independent people, which you have to first be independent people before this can happen. It's when two independent people come together in a mutually beneficial way. Like, there is a a sense of dependence there. You do rely on each other, but you both have your own independence. Um, What that can look like is you don't depend on the other person for your happiness. I think that in and of itself, just that understanding of not depending on another person for your happiness is very freeing. Because I think... When a man is in a relationship with a woman, on some level, he wants to make her happy. And I feel like it would relieve y'all of a lot of, of stress and makes more space for vulnerability if you knew that even if you weren't doing okay at the moment, she, was, she would still be able to maintain her own happiness and she would still be good as you're like processing and figuring whatever out. Um, or that she could help you process and figure it out without 
Make her. It about her. Yeah, without making it about her, um, without crumbling, without freaking out. Again, I think it, it takes a certain amount of strength. It takes a certain amount of self-awareness. Um, it takes a certain amount of self-love, um, fortitude. Like you have to be confident and comfortable in yourself and who you are. Um, and you have to be making sure you're doing the, the things necessary to take care of yourself as a woman so that you have space to take care of other people that you, that you care about um, or to hold space for other people that you care about. I think a lot of times women do things from a place of lack you know, um, I'm going to do this for you because I'm hoping that you're going to do something for me in return. Um, and that's going to make me feel good as opposed to, I feel so good and I'm so overflowing that I can flow over into you. I think that when a woman is so good within herself that she is just like constantly overflowing, it makes it a lot easier to be there for someone else. Like to put it in a concrete way, me, when I'm happy and when I've been taking care of myself and when I've been working out and I've been eating healthy and I've been, you know, doing whatever it is that I need to do, I've been meditating, like whatever it is that I need to do to take care of me, it doesn't matter if somebody cuts me off in traffic. It doesn't matter if somebody cusses me out to my face. It doesn't matter if Somebody, my family member, somebody has a stank attitude and they're taking it out on me because I'm happy. I'm good. Like when you're in a good mood, when you're in a good place, there's not a lot that somebody else can do that's going to shake that. It's going to rock that because you're good. But when you haven't been doing those things or even worse, you've been like, depending on somebody else to make you feel that way. And they're only human, so they're probably not doing everything that you would want them to have, especially since you're probably not happy and you're nitpicking or whatever. Um, then anything somebody does is gonna get on your nerves. Anything somebody does is gonna be like an earth shattering experience. Anything someone does, you're not gonna be able to hold space or listen or whatever, like you're just going to snap. So I think that people underestimate the importance of a woman taking care of herself and like being her own piece. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> let, let's transition to the namesake of this series, Kevin Samuels. Oh, okay. So some of the things um, he talks about, some of the ways he, he says men should evaluate women, fit, feminine, and friendly. That's how he puts it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think he calls it FBI, CIA, but I think CIA is men, FBI is women. But I can't remember what FBI stands for, but anyway. You're saying essentially some of the same things that he says. What are your thoughts on the Kevin Samuels phenomenon? What do you mean by that? You can take it wherever you want. I personally don't care for Kevin Samuels. I don't love his delivery. I think that there are times where he says things that make sense. But the thing is, I, I also think that he slides in things that are not healthy. And sometimes that's more dangerous than someone who's just like flat out all the way. Like, you know that everything they're saying is bullshit when it's like bullshit, like a little bit of bullshit mixed in with truth. That's usually the when it's most dangerous, in my opinion. And I feel like he does that. I mean, and I don't feel like 
the conversations that he's having. I have a, a let me preface this by saying I do not I am not a Kevin Samuels follower. So anything that I'm talking about will be um, from a few videos maybe I've seen here and there and some clips. There's There's been very few full videos that I've seen of him. So my opinion is on a, a limited, uh, I guess, view of his work. Um, but I don't feel like his conversations are productive. I feel like he is furthering the divide. And that's the problem that I have with him. I don't think he's helping. Why do you think so many men feel validated by his ministry? Uh, uh, I hate to even use that word for him. <laughs> his ministry? Okay. Uh, because I feel like he says things that are, that make sense. It's true. He, he speaks to y'all's experiences, and you're you're not used to that. It's understandable. And I feel like the reason that there are so many angry men, like the say goes, riot is the language of the unheard, and y'all have not been heard for a long time. So y'all are lashing the fuck out right now. That's how I feel. Every black man is a podcaster. And every black man that's a podcaster got some shit to say. You know, go for it. That's cool. <laughs> so I hear the tone thing a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason I empathize is my tone has improved over the years. I mean, obviously, I'm nowhere near Kevin Samuels in age, wisdom, experience, whatever. Um, but I didn't always have the tone that I have now. I didn't always have the patience, the delivery, the, the, the grace that I do now. So I empathize. I, I, I see him as the black man's anger translator. Um, and I, I think that's why I'm not as quick to throw him away. Because I think what he speaks to, and this is gonna segue into my question for you is, the main thing I get from his ministry is that, look, they don't actually want what they say they want. So from the woman who, according to her, was, couldn't respect the man unless he made just as much money as her, um, he was literally saying, are you attractive to the type of man who does make the type of money that you say you can respect? And a lot of times that's not a message that black women get. Women in general get because it's you can have anything you want. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Is there a disconnect between what some women feel deserving of and what they actually qualify for? I know that's a crass term, but do you think there's a disconnect at all? I don't know. The reason that I say I don't know is because who says or who determines what someone qualifies for? I think there's a lot of people who are with someone that the outside world would say they're not qualified for. So I feel like that's tough to say in that respect. Um... Can you ask that again? Maybe I, in a I different wanna, way. I, wa I want to piggyback off of that point. One of the things that I think is pretty consistent in male nature and in female nature 
Men tend to deal with probability. Women tend to deal with possibility. So to your point, there are people who the outside world might say are with people they don't qualify for. Do you believe those are the exceptions of the rule? I'll say the rule. They're the rule. Hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, the exception. The, the exception. exception. Okay, okay, okay. Because it's the rule that people are generally with people that they qualify for. And I, and I think part of the, part of the reason, like, um, Kevin Samuels aside, some of the conversation between men and women uh, doesn't go well is because going back to your point about media not liking black men, going back to your point about black men feeling not good enough, there is a effort, there is a branding effort, marketing effort to tell people that they're not good enough for different reasons, right? To, to buy things, to make them good enough, or whatever the case may be. Um, in our community in particular, there's this idea, and I, I believe it's born of trauma. It's like a backlash to I'm not good enough, so now I'm the best thing ever, right? And, and nobody can tell me otherwise. I can be whatever weight, whatever mental disposition, and I deserve the best. But what tends to happen is that individual who is, quote unquote, not good enough, will talk down on disrespect people that are actually in their sphere. So with the average of best girl, it wasn't that she said she wanted, wants a six-figure man. She said that she can't respect the man who makes $40,000 a year. $50,000 a year, when technically that's what she qualifies for. So why, why do you think there's this disconnect between the whole qualifying for who you, who is in your league um, conversation? Because again, like who determines what someone's qualified for and like what that actually looks like? Like who has the score sheet says this is what you qualify for. I feel like it is the rule that people are with, people that they qualify for, just based off of universal principles, right? I can't tell you, I couldn't take couples that are qualified for each other and tell you why they're qualified for each other necessarily. I can tell you why maybe I feel like they're compatible, why I feel like they're interested in each other, but like, I can't look at myself and be like, Dasha, this is what you qualify for. I think the score sheets are kept by both sides. I think women have a score sheet and I think men have a score sheet. And typically um, men of means have more access to higher quality women. Um, quality based on how we assess quality, looks, aesthetics, right? And typically attractive women tend to have more access to um, high quality men, you know, men of means, men, men, intelligent, the whole nine, right? Um, do, do you agree with that? Makes sense, yeah. It seems like that's not the that's understanding true. or people are like, no, that's not true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there are very wealthy men who are with women who are not the most attractive women because of things like their feminine energy, I feel like, or the kinds of mothers that they are. So I... And, and to your point, I think that is the more important conversation because if you are willing to make concessions for, if you're willing to strengthen your other offerings, that's one thing. But what tends to happen is I'm not willing to be more nurturing and improve the other auxiliary traits that could make me competitive. I'm just competitive just off top. So it's like, I can't dunk, but I'm a really good shooter. Some people are saying I can't dunk or shoot, but I deserve an NBA contract. And those people tend saying? to be women, yes. Those, are, those people tend to be women, yes. 
And it, I only bring that up because that's where Kevin Samuels comes in. I, I won't just say those people just tend to be women because men are bold. Men are bold. They'll be like, yeah, you know, I just, they'll be, I literally saw this video with this woman. She's a nurse. And this man had just uh, been admitted to the hospital for an overdose. He tells her that he just got out of prison and then proceeds to ask her on a date. Hey, listen, shoot your shot. <laughs> so, men, y'all are bold too. Let's not get that twisted. I love y'all. Y'all are bold too. I've had some very kind, like, no, thank you. I think I think what's what's tough though, right? I think the main difference is like our um, bravery is very quickly challenged hmm. and very quickly shut down. So it's like I can think I'm the fastest dude on my football team, but I got to line up and race. Yeah. Women, on the other hand, fortunately or unfortunately. You could think you that bitch. And you could get lucky enough to fuck that nigga. That guy, that apex guy. Now, he's not going to wife you. He's not going to commit to you. He's not going to. But you can still like you can still feel and be validated by some of the things that men literally like. If you're not that guy, you're not getting that girl. This is literally cut and dry like that. But for women, you could finesse your way into his VIP section, his bedroom, the whole nine. So your your delusion can be perpetual. Hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why it's hard for women, for instance, to hear a Kevin Samuels or to hear any pushback from men, even in their lives. Like you're not even working on your jumper, but you still want to be in the league. Like God didn't bless you with hops. Cool. No, I can jump. I go dunk the basketball. I don't have to. But you're not working on your jumper. I just feel like women don't know the metrics. I feel like maybe they just don't know the metrics. I mean, we talked about the, the, bad, the bad bitch mentality and stuff earlier a little bit. You know, um, they think not smiling is going to get somebody to come up with them, up to them. So maybe... Maybe women just, I mean, I wouldn't say I know the, the, the formula. Scorch, yeah, what the formula is. I think you have an advantage. <laughs> What's my advantage? You could dunk. You could dunk. So whereas, you know, another basketball player is going to have to work on their fundamentals mm -hmm. and their shooting. You could come in the gym and boom, you know what I'm saying? So you have an advantage. Now, if you, with that advantage, if you also develop a jump shot, you might be the next MJ, you know? So how, how do we, um, because men listen to y'all. Like if women say, a man in a Birkin bag is sexy. I guarantee you every hood dude is going to have a Birkin bag tomorrow. They're going to wear it proudly, right? Um, but on the flip side, men's wants and men's asks tend to not be um, validated. Mm. We want y'all to just take me ex as yeah, I Yeah, accept whatever am. we give you. That's tough. I mean, I just feel like there's a reason women feel that way, though. Sure. And I feel like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I do feel like y'all are playing into it a little bit. No, I facts, do. Facts. I feel like y'all play into it a little bit. Absolutely. If y'all chose the kinds of people, or how about this? If y'all completely left alone, how about that? Completely left alone the women that go against what you actually want, then women would stop doing that stuff. I really do think that they would. I think it's confusing for women because you say like, oh, you can sleep with them or you can get in their VIP section or whatever. It doesn't, 
So you're going to let me into your home and you're going to sleep with me, but you wouldn't be with me. I don't think a woman, even if she understands that on a, like an intellectual level, Can like it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to us. Cause that's not how we function. That's not. And so you can tell a woman you're not looking for nothing serious and proceed to take her out on dates and hang out with her and do this, that, and a third. That's confusing for a woman because you're saying one thing, but you're showing me something different. And a woman who doesn't know what to look for or doesn't like is not, no one's put her on game. She's going to think she's the baddest because you made her think that she's the baddest because you literally inserted her body. You literally gave her your time and you gave her your money. But you wouldn't date her. You wouldn't wife her. What sense does that make that you gave her all the resources? You gave her all of the things that are like freaking sacred to a man, I would think. <laughs> 